Hello everyone on YouTube and welcome to a new 3D art core tutorial and this time we will learn how to create the glowing balls if you don't already know what I mean so here is a quick example for those balls uh, I've created them in Maya and after that I edit some extra things inside After Effects but this is what mainly we will do we will create those balls and spheres balls or whatever and I want to uh, say a few things uh, first of all those balls are very unique ones um, the um, I like found the way to do it very by accidentally uh, which it's not very much by accident it's more like testing things uh, trying to do some other moves inside Maya in order to create things so um, this is how I've learned those and truly I did uh, wanted to get this uh, <laughs> this kind of sphere and by luck I mean I think that I did uh, manage to master the how to create this and the funny thing is that it's not that uh, difficult it's very easy to create those uh, you just need to be aware that there are many features in Maya which can give you the options to create some new unique uh, shapes and things okay <clears throat> so another uh, thing I want you to talk about is those two colors that I've used here uh, so I think like uh, somewhere two years ago I, I dropped by uh, some picture of some guy who created a sphere with a little bit of details just a little bit slight uh, difference from this sphere it was like the old sphere was uh, in red and there were few little pieces inside the sphere that were uh, at the same color and glowing like here okay and back then I was very fascinated by this picture because it was very unique picture um, and the simplicity of it was like the the best thing that I've ever seen in someone modeling uh, something like that. So I think that for two years I was um, always uh, dragged this uh, thinking of this that model that I've saw uh, in my uh, mind, and um, I finally um, had a chance to master it, and actually by by my by my own uh, experience. So um, I didn't saw any other tutorial on how to create those and this is something that I'm truly proud of myself, okay? And yeah, that's all. Um, about the tutorial, we will learn how to create this uh, sphere and I want also to touch about just, just about something that I will show you here. Um, just a bit of how to animate glowing okay so you see here it's very it's only about like 30 uh, 50 frames um, but you can see that the ball is glowing here okay and I will show you how to animate glowing uh, to your spheres and I think that I will also uh, teach you some other things like how to spin those which you can see here and basically how to uh, do this stuff uh, by your own um, the last thing is um, how to um, I, I, w I want to deliver this tutorial I think in few parts so uh, it will be each part will touch other subjects so um, you want me to see like one hour of tutorial in order to create something um, each one of those parts will deliver something else uh, that got to do with this um, spheres that you see here and I hope that <coughs> it will give you just uh, the basic in order to create things like that 
and maybe extra extra knowledge about how you can do many other things that looks just like this thing but a little bit uh, different okay so let's start um, that doesn't got to do with you need to close it this is the scene in Maya as you can see um, this is how I um, recorded uh, the scene inside Maya so you can see now a playback okay and I will stop this because it's starting to act very heavy and let's just open a new scene don't save and do me a favor I don't want to touch this subject anymore than I should um, I always smooth wireframes I never open a new project folder because most of my files are going to the same directory so in your case please do it do open a new project from the project window and after that set it to be the project folder and also make yourself a very big favor every 10 minutes in the tutorial any tutorial that I, you, you watch me doing, uh, teaching, please um, save your progress every 10 minutes. It's very useful. You can lose uh, a lot of time of working uh, if um, Maya will collapse or crash or whatever. So, the first thing is that we are going to create Sphere. And usually I'm not using the interactive uh, creation tool, just the basic default setting for my Maya and I create sphere that is from um, 20 by 20 on 20 uh, subdivision axis and height okay and if you want to see this control A on your keyboard while uh, your sphere is selected and then switch from this tab to this tab and you will see this polysphere history okay so you can add more subdivision but don't do it right now because um, it will only make things harder in the um, when we will continue okay so 20 by 20 make sure it's like that um, and if it's not set it to be 20 by 20 and then um, the first thing you want to do is go over edit mesh chamfer vertex and click on this little box here so after you've done so, uh, go over Edit, Reset Setting, and click on Chamfer Vertex. So after you apply this, uh, if you will choose your sphere again, this is what you will get. And by any meaning, uh, this sphere actually does look good, uh, like it. Okay, so I I, re I really uh, starting to. Uh, show you things that you may consider um, to you know uh, maybe try other things by yourself just to see what 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 these um, options are capable of so this is one sphere that you can create and you can do uh, many things from here but I will show you how I've created that spiral sphere so after you apply the chamfer vertex you go over the poly chamfer tab because after you apply the chamfer this tab will be added itself to here so click on it and where it says with 0 0.250 just slide the slider all the way to the right and this is basically how you start to do this okay this is how it looks at start and if we will tap on 3 to smooth preview uh, you will get something like this okay <laughs> so you don't want to do this but what you do want to do is start um, extract some things from here okay and this is the artist part <laughs> I think but you will do this by clicking on this face okay and start to select the all all of the faces in the same row and you know this is 
like very frustrating but <clears throat> um, this is what you need to do and I can't see any other choice here in order to do this um, okay so excuse me now you may ask yourself why I don't just click once or twice on this next uh, face and it will pick them all no it doesn't it picks some of them but not all of them so you can use it also but make sure that you select them always with shift and if by mistake you lost them all just click undo like so you see I did lost them all the selection so control Z to undo that and there you go they are all still selected okay so this is basically what you need to do uh, in order to extract uh, these rows of uh, spirals from your uh, ball okay now um, meanwhile that I'm talking uh, I'm trying to think maybe I will try to pause the video okay so um, it won't take much time uh, for you to um, watch this tutorial uh, it's basically very uh, pointless okay so I will pause for now um, just just a moment okay I'm posing okay so here I'm almost done and you can see I have a few um, uh, faces to select and that will be fast right from here so um, meanwhile that I was like selecting those I also uh, wanted to point pointing to something um, the reason why um, I just suggest you not to apply more subdivision axes it's because of the uh, because of how this um, object is um, like complicated you see there is only 20 by 20 and it's already doing, giving you uh, some dizziness by creating this and it will be much more hard work to do this only by um, adding more subdivisions so make sure it's like 20 by 20 always uh, equal numbers and uh, like 10 10 on 10 on 10 uh, like 10 20 or 30 uh, or more I don't know if you want to struggle and do this that way now the next thing is also to pick these faces uh, those okay those two and from here what you need to do is go over mesh and choose extract okay click extract once and from this point I really suggest you first to save what you do now after you've done it you can um, just click on one of those and take them outside okay one of them and now you have two different uh, spheres uh, spiral spheres and you can work with both of them or you can delete this one and maybe if you like you can uh, duplicate this one so you don't need this one now another thing is you may want to consider um, catch only those uh, like the this face um, okay like whoa okay let's try to do this that way um, just grab all those uh, vertices on the top of this um, circle here okay so um, you don't have to do this I'm doing it because uh, right now I feel like uh, at the last sphere I've done I didn't do it so it really depends on you your choice um, I'm just trying to do something with it um, you will see in a moment what I'm talking about so just 
Watch this. Okay. These two. Okay, now I'm trying to take the scale tool and maybe scale them. Oh, okay, so no. Not from here at least. Uh, this one. Only this one. Scale it like so. <coughs> or maybe edit mesh and merge to center. Okay, so you see what it gives you. Um, this way you just get rid of the center and you've got something that it's starting from here and not from the circle itself. So that's fine. Uh, also, you can grab those like that. It will be much more easier, but because you also selected those that underneath, so mark the area with the control and that will unselect them. Just make sure that everything is correct and again edit mesh, merge to center. So now we're basically done with it. Now uh, the thing is um, I didn't move this sphere from the center of my grid, okay? And there is a reason for that. Now if I will create a new sphere, okay, uh, basically the same size, I just need to scale it. So I want to scale it to something that just a bit less than the spiral sphere and then to grab the sp spiral sphere and I want to uh, first um, maybe before we are creating the sphere uh, let's undo that let's uncreate the sphere for now wait just for a second we will catch the sphere now you see those black areas this this is uh, because we missing some um, some parts which is this part and that cause uh, some edges to be softened now I've tried before to um, right click and to um, sorry shift right click choose soften hard edges and choose harden edges okay but that won't uh, get rid of those black areas, it just increased them. <laughs> I don't know what's the reason, but even if you will do um, soften Arden Edge, so um, it won't help you. The only thing you can do is tap on 3 on Smooth Preview and that way they will disappear, okay? Now, <clears throat> from here what you can do is actually maybe undo the preview, just tap on 1 on your keyboard and extrude it first extrude it but we are going to extrude it very very just a bit okay and we are going to create like four extrude for this so I'm extruding it you see that with something like this again extrude and like this okay now I want to tap on F8 and you can see that from the out, uh, outer uh, circle there is no areas that are black and from the inner part we do have some parts like that so um, basically um, if you will tap now on 3 you will get something that looks like this and that's fine this is how I worked with it okay uh, you may want to extrude it maybe just a bit once more but do whatever you feel like uh, I am going to enter this subject, you really need to do what you feel from here. Now, now we will do create the next sphere and as I told you before, just scale it to be just a little bit smaller, but we, we do want this to touch the sphere, okay, the spiral sphere, like this. Now the reason is <laughs> that you just need to tap on 3 to make it smoother so that way you really can uh, touch the spiral sphere now um, also you can see that there are like just a bit space here so if it really bother you um, which uh, I believe that it will bother you just click extrude once more and give it some more thickness to the spiral sphere and 
that way you will have some more extra uh, like uh, area that you can enter with your sphere your inner sphere to the spiral sphere like that okay now um, another thing is to um, remember something um, yeah we have just a, a tiny problem here in this area um, yeah this is why I kept I think the, the those inner faces uh, the faces that I've um, merged earlier just because of these points um, but let me first uh, explain something maybe I will extrude it I guess once more uh, no that's too much um, like that yeah that seems great but as I see these are just started to look weird so don't do this too much uh, yes don't ask I'm smoothing it yeah it looks awful than last one but let's just continue okay so the next thing is to uh, bear in mind that you need always to um, I, I'm just undoing the last thing I done because it looks awful but um, you need to make sure that um, whenever you create sphere like this okay I will move those pieces over here I just want to explain something whenever you create sphere um, you see there is the, the middle point here and down there so they both the the spheres here need to match so this is why you don't rotate this sphere and then when you create the other one it should be the same okay so they both need to stay like this okay with those points up and down at the same um, direction okay and then after you apply your uh, material shaders you do want to uh, combine those two so they will never move uh, to other direction so uh, when you spin them they will both go to the same direction and that um, hierarchy of how they should uh, stick to each other will st remain the same okay so from here um, let's um, create the shaders uh, for these balls um, so first of all you need to make sure that uh, mental ray is uh, launched so click on here okay display render setting choose my uh, software here where render using choose mental ray not my software mental ray if you don't see mental ray go over window setting preferences plugin manager and here from this list look for maya2mr.bundle tick on both of those boxes and hopefully at the next time you will launch maya it will launch automatically so close this and then again go over the render setting maya render using mental ray and from here what you need to do is um, go over the common tab render options um, and tick to turn off the enable default light uh, choose whatever resolution gate you want okay so for this uh, let's keep it on HD 720 go over quality tab uh, here you can max sample level of 2 type 2 here ray tracing if you like to have uh, you don't need there is no glass here but maybe um, you will want to use glass as the first picture that I post okay so also go over <coughs> go over um, yeah indirect lighting create an HDRI map okay that's very important so 
create it. And if you don't know how to create HDRI map or you don't know <coughs> the subject, look for the tutorial HDRI map on my channel and um, there you can learn about the subject. So I'm what I'm doing actually, I'm just uh, launching an HDRI map file. So that will be our environment uh, kind of light, okay? So, um, for caps, this is my own personal, uh, sorry, my own personal files. Uh, you can go download them somewhere. And we will add some caustics, just because if you would like later on to... Um, add some uh, gloss material instead of the uh, glowing uh, shader that we will build so click on it click on final gathering and from the final gathering secondary diffuse bounce slide it over one and from the final gathering quality select filter one okay and close this now um, let's create a plane, usual uh, simple plane, and stretch it all over the grid. And you want the ball's sphere to be above it, so move it over here. And <clears throat> also, let's duplicate this uh, plane, okay, control D, and rotate it that way like 90 degrees now when you rotate you can hold down the J okay J key and start rotate it so it will snap to some um, uh, degrees uh, like you know half cut of each uh, quarter of degree or <laughs> I'm not sure how to <laughs> explain this but you know this is like it's just snapping to few points that already uh, like half the way okay so you put it over here and then you duplicate this one and rotate it this direction okay like so and there you go you have some background so it won't uh, whenever you take the render it won't show you any other background there now, <clears throat> now let's start building the shader. We go over Window, Rendering Editor, and Hypershade. And from here, <coughs> um, it's going to be just a bit uh, different, okay? Um, We're going to use Mental Ray Maya Material X. So here, click on Mental Ray and choose the my material x where is it okay this one my material x you have all sort of mental ray material x but this one it's what we are going to use so choose this and <clears throat> here i want you to change the color to this reddish um kind of uh color okay and I want you to bring down the reflectivity a bit but the glossiness I want it to be all the way up so keep it up or maybe um, go over um, yeah this is basically it let's apply it so um, if you like to apply this you just need to pick this spherical sphere right click on top of your um, material and choose assign material to selection now you can already see that we have some issue here um, seems that our sphere is too much big so we need to scale it very a bit and that way that's fine and let's try to take a render just to see how it looks um you may want to also <laughs> first create light so create light this time point light okay and 
bring it to the top like here yeah this is where I want it somewhere here maybe and we need to go to the attribute editor for it so this is the attribute editor if you don't see it click here once or twice it will open make sure it's selected by the way um, expand the mental rate tab over here choose um, here from the custom shaders click on this light shader checkered box and from this pop out menu um, choose the mental ray lights here and physical light okay great so now um, from the physical light tab uh, click twice on this white color and make sure it's yeah it's 1000 we, we, we shall see right now what, what, what it gives us so don't worry about it um, let's take a render see what, what we see what we get okay so that's just a bit much more red uh, light red than I had in my scene but um, you can uh, maybe also build another shader which I also did I was trying different shaders on it so I was like going over the hyper shade uh, created a blend material this time <coughs> okay let's clean the graph here is the blend material you can drag it over here with your middle mouse wheel and from here what you need to do is actually the same procedure just make sure you have the same color you okay I'm not sure what happening here with Maya sometimes Maya is just freaking out uh, yeah see sometimes there are bugs that I'm not um, okay I will first save it as I told you save scene has sphere tutorial tutorial okay save as and now we will deal with this uh, shader um, so <clears throat> we do want the specular roll-off to be uh, somewhere there okay six point six hundred about uh, specular color maybe less just a bit uh, reflectivity we do want it to be high and we do also want um, the MI reflection blur to be uh, four okay and then tick the derive from Maya <clears throat> and then click on take setting from Maya and those uh, parameters will change and we were going to change them back to what we want so forwarding for the shininess um, color click on this color choose this uh, sampler and click somewhere here or somewhere here so it will choose some color it, it's black but it's supposed to be this kind of white and what about uh, reflectivity the reflectivity here bring it down to about 220 um, it's very experimental so just try to do something uh, that match this okay so uh, accent tree uh, maybe lower it uh, trying to get some dark color but without um, affecting the how um, how it will look like uh, shininess and glossiness so let's try render it again and as you can see still um, there are there is a lot of light here so we need to reduce the light uh, intensity in order to not get this red as you can see here okay so um, 
yeah I will uh, close this and let's grab the light here is the light and we can try to move it to the back somewhere here and maybe uh, after you select it uh, try to reduce the intensity like so okay and also let's try to take another render so it does darken the area but not much the the color let's try to play a little bit more with the color itself the shader uh, sorry I created a cube <laughs> um, okay the shader and my material X oh it wasn't my material X we didn't apply it. oh I see I see we didn't apply the blend material sorry <laughs> that's funny um, let's apply the my material shader yeah right okay let's try render it um, <clears throat> So it does a bit reflect reflective. Uh, maybe we want to reduce it. Um, yeah, we definitely want to reduce the reflectivity. So um, let's try reduce it uh, by going to the blend material and maybe uh, the diffuse. A little bit and the specular color and the reflectivity which we apparently do want to reduce and if you're not satisfied with it you uh, just play with it and try other uh, shaders um, it's really right now it's really hard for me to remember what exactly did I I've done there in the that shader but uh, as you can see that was uh, something that close to this um, okay so the next thing is to um, create the shader for the inner uh, sphere so uh, go over the hyper shade again clear the graph with this eraser tool okay and this time we will create a blim okay and we will put it somewhere here here you can work with the work area which it says work area the same way that you uh, move inside your uh, here this work area so it's alt and right uh, mouse click to zoom in zoom out can enlarge the window and do whatever you feel like move them over here so we created a blin and we also want to create ramp shader okay so bring it the ramp shader over here and you also want to uh, type here sum okay just sum and that will show you the sampler info node okay click on it once and bring it over here so now we will do something um, first of all, you right, uh, you middle mouse uh, button, click on top of this, hold and drag on top of the ramp. Okay, again, and from the menu, choose other. Then it will show you this uh, window. Okay, now from the this left display menu, make sure that show hidden is shown and uh, is ticked and also for the right display show hidden is ticked okay now from here uh, you need to choose facing uh, ratio okay and from here uh, you want to choose uh, expand the UV core chords okay and choose the V chord okay and close so it will connect this one to the ramp and the ramp will turn into red don't worry about it 
Now I want just to minimize a bit this hyper shade window and while I'm choosing the ramp shader you can see that I have some uh, things here. So what you want to do is uh, from here is to uh, if you don't see it just click on the ramp twice okay double click on it and it will show you this box and click on this green X okay so it will remove it and here click on this circle and choose something white like this okay and from the blue click this blue here and again click on this choose uh, very light blue okay you can maybe slide this over here and choose light and blue like sky okay and that's fine click done and here you want to choose um, <clears throat> you want to choose a uh, circular rim up okay ramp um, I wanted to choose redial ramp but because I've chose the V uh, chord uh, I can't do this anymore but um, that's why I like choosing uh, some of those that covering all the area you see when I choose the U it's just cover this area with blue so circle circular is um, just about something that I like like it to be okay um, I would find a way how to <laughs> uh, deal with it but um, for now this is uh, enough okay and now the next thing is to grab our bling uh, no sorry um, middle mouse uh, click and hold the ramp and drag it over the bling choose other here you will get this menu again choose uh, out color from the left okay and color from the right okay and close so then you will get something that look just like this okay so that's fine and this is how we want it to be uh, you can play with the place to the texture so um, that can do some changes like you preferred um, like covering the whole ball with this kind of effect so um, try to mirror U and V and maybe stagger I'm not sure really try to do whatever you feel and now we will apply this to the ball okay so this goes right click on this on this inner sphere right click on this and assign material to selection now let's try render this out but before no just render this out by the way I'm not lighting uh, a cigarette every time you hear those clicks uh, I'm smoking rolled tabac, so it's always uh, hmm. it's like always uh, you know the cigarette is turning off uh, <laughs> turning off that's funny uh, so yeah this is what we get right now and you want to add more eccentric or incandescent so um, go over the Incandence, incandescence and had more incandescence and <laughs> render this out again okay we we, we do have a lot of ref reflections on top of it and this is what I've actually reduced I try to remove all the reflections at least from the this white sphere okay so uh, you can do it also just bring the reflectivity all the way down and this way you will get something better uh, at least this is what I think 
So you will have only reflections on the outer sphere but not on the top of the white sphere. Okay. And yep, yep, yep. Um, if you like, you can add glow intensity. Okay, if you come here and put just a bit, like uh, somewhere about 60, 0 0.060, and you will try to render this. So I will render only this part so it will get quicker. Um, so it will get glow. This is too much glow. It really depends on your light source. If your light source is very lightened uh, by intensity, so it will uh, just spread much more intensity to, <coughs> to your glow. So you may want to reduce it a bit to 40. And again, render only this region that I've marked. Great, so now you know how to create the sphere and actually how to apply uh, those two shaders. Um, but I do want to touch just uh, another uh, thing is accept this uh, sphere. By the way, make sure you, after you apply the, the shaders, grab them both, mesh and combine them. And don't worry about the, com uh, the combine uh, function. After you combine them, go over modify, center the pivot for them, and that way you will know that those two are grouped together, and whenever you choose to spin them like that, they will both go together as one unit. But if you want to uh, change after that, um, you want to change like um, the shaders, you can go over mesh and choose separate. Okay, that will separate them back again in two different pieces, and that's cool. Okay, so don't forget about this option, it's very useful. Um, now, I want to show you just another thing. Um, Let's say, for instance, we would take a polycylinder, okay? And if I will grab only this vertex point, okay? Only this top vertex point, and I will choose to chamfer it as we did at the first, at the beginning of the tutorial, okay? You will get something like this, okay? Now, if I will choose this face, okay? And I will choose to uh, mesh, edit mesh, poke face, it will add those extra inner edges, okay? It's like connecting those edges that were outside into the middle vertex inside. And if you will create a chamfer vertex again, this is what you will get. And this is very unique uh, pattern, okay? So what you can do with it uh, is basically very useful for if you like to create a daisy flowers. Let's say, um, by the way, this is also one of my discovery, discoveries yesterday. So you can like uh, delete those faces, delete uh, those faces here, and those faces. Okay, basically everything that is around these, also the points one. Okay, um, see I'm just deleting those faces which not needed. Okay, and you do have some pattern, or, you know, like something that looks like daisy flower. And you can like extrude it a bit so it will have some more thickness and see like this tap on F8 and if you really want you can add um, animation and create deformers and lattice to it so that way you can like uh, add more uh, divisions to the lattice and from here, um, 
truly on your uh, decision you can like choose these uh, lattice points in the middle or just in the you know those uh, okay those and those see and you can bring them all up like so okay uh, I should have done this with the lattice so <laughs> the lattice points not the other okay and that way it will be smoother and can extrude this face over here and just make it scale it like so again like so so you see this way you can create <laughs> very uh, simple stuff and also find some new other ways to create things which uh, as you can see are very simple to do and I really recommend you to play play a lot with those options and try to chamfer anything you can uh, use and to see what what result it can give you and basically it uh, to this part of tutorial um, I hope that this one was helpful and also uh, much more uh, informed you. So this is it. See you next in the next tutorial part where which really we we will uh, uh, continue on learning how to animate and also maybe apply some um, force fields to this uh, material, this sphere, ball sphere, and all the rest things I've talked about that I do want to show you. So, and uh, this is it. See you soon. We'll meet again in the next part. So, bye.